My name is Johannes Auenmüller. I'm a curator here at the Museo Egizio since January 2020. I studied Egyptology, classical archaeology and prehistoric archaeology at Free University Berlin, where I also did my PhD about the territoriality of the elites of the New Kingdom. After my PhD, I undertook research on bronze casting technology at Bonn University and about the social fabric of New Kingdom Nubia in Munich. In addition to my archaeological work in Egypt and in the Sudan, I have taught at the universities of Berlin, Leipzig, Bonn and Munich, as well as in Münster, where I was a research assistant before coming to Turin. Well, I did not really choose a career as curator in particular. As I've already said, my earlier life as an Egyptologist took place in several German universities where I studied, undertook research and taught. My first close contact to museum work as an Egyptologist was during the one-year project at Bonn University, where we studied an intriguing set of late period casting molds. In the context of this project, we also prepared an exhibition in cooperation with colleagues in Leipzig, Hanover and Gotha. And this laid the foundation for my still limited experience in curatorial and museum work. After several years in teaching Egyptology at Münster University, I then just got lucky in winning the call for the curator job in Turin. Well, there is not really a typical day. It always depends on your tasks, which can be quite different from time to time. Since I see myself as a research curator, I spend quite a lot of time in the library actually, doing research about certain objects and writing scholarly texts. Another thing that I very much like about working at the Museo Egizio is the fact that the collection of this museum allows us to directly work with the original artifacts. Studying stela, bronze objects or any other type of material culture with the very originals in front of you is key for understanding the objects, not only in terms of their materiality and manufacture, but also regarding the roles and social settings these artifacts had and played in pharaonic society. Well, I would not call them idols, but Jan Assmann, Jürgen Osing, Stefan Seidelmeier, Martin Fitzenreiter and Angelika Lohwasser would be amongst those scholars that indeed had the largest and still lasting impact on my expertise and research, both when I was a university student and later as researcher. Besides my Egyptological heroes or idols, reading the works of French sociologist Pierre Bourdieu, amongst other cultural anthropologists, also opened many new perspectives and ways of thinking. Well, I'm still new in this field and I'm still learning from all my colleagues here at the Museo Egizio. My advice for someone who wants to become an Egyptologist or museum curator would be to understand Egyptology as a subject that covers the whole range of cultural phenomena in the Nile Valley, from potsherds via papyri to pyramids. In addition, I would also give the advice to look beyond the traditional boundaries of the subject, e.g. into Nubian or Sudanese archaeology, or develop an interest into cultural anthropology as well as sociology. Much can also be learned from thinking about the material, manufacture, and use of the objects as well as their social role and setting. This is anyway one of the most important um, aspects to me, understanding the social context of things. My first time participating in an archaeological excavation was rather unimpressive. As a pupil, I did a short internship at the Saxony State Office for Archaeology during which I briefly took part in excavating late medieval cellars in the historical city center of Dresden. I remember that I had to properly clean a context with a trowel so that someone else could document it later properly. My other excavations in Austria, Egypt and Sudan have however left me, left me with so many amazing and lasting impressions that I can't really single out one of them now. Well, it really depends how fragility is measured. At Darshur, during the excavations of the Old Kingdom Mastaba Cemetery in front of the Red Pyramid, led by Nicole Alexanian and Stefan Seidelmeier, I was tasked with lifting some very friable inscribed wooden coffin fragments from down the shafts to the surface, which proved quite challenging. 
it felt like even looking at them would turn them into dust. But aside from these, most other artifacts that I came across during my archaeological or museum work were quite solid and strong. Maybe except for the jar stoppers of unbaked Nile clay that I had to register on Elephantini Island. They were also very friable and their handling had to be done with utmost care in order for them not to be fully disintegrated. Fortunately, I'm not haunted by any such questions during the night. But if I might formulate such questions, they would maybe be, how was life like in Memphis, Elephantini, or a village in Middle Egypt during the Old Kingdom? Or in Jebel Lane, Asyud, or a small hamlet during the first intermediate period? Or in Lahun, Edfu, or a fortress in Nubia during the Middle Kingdom, or at Amarna, Amara West, or the outskirts of Thebes during the New Kingdom, and so on and so forth. Finally, I would also, for instance, like to participate and observe how bronze was produced at Amara West in the New Kingdom, or, for instance, how the bronze Osiris figure was cast, repaired, and used on Elephantini Island in the Egyptian Lake period. I did, in fact, choose five objects, so-called bronze votive coffins for animal mummies, because of two things. First, my research on bronze casting that I undertook at the University of Bonn and my general interest in bronze technology. And second, the currently ongoing project of a comprehensive catalog including all the animal mummies and related objects in the Museo Egizio collection. After I came to Turin, I started to study the objects made of bronze related to this animal mummy phenomenon. And this work in the end led to the idea of choosing a few interesting pieces with special features as the centerpieces for my the Laboratorio dello Studioso exhibition. And in terms of stories they tell, the question of their production is of key interest to me. Next to the enigmatic lump of lead in the head of the falcon figure that seems to have technological significance, the most fascinating piece is the long rectangular coffin with the representation of a winding eel the head of which is an erect uraeal snake with human head wearing the double crown. Besides its fascinating religious significance as a representation of the god Atum, this piece is one of the very few objects with obvious traces of an ancient repair, which attests to the technological know-how of the ancient craftspeople. <laughs> 